Mary Michelle Cross Smith, known to most as Dr. Daycare. I would like to welcome you to the mentoring program designed to educating our community and issues facing working women. We will be speaking to our guests this day on arts, politics, education, law, medicine, finances, politics, and certainly all about how they got into women's business. The goal of the show is to provide information that comes only from personal experience and pass this information to our own daughters, nieces, neighbors, family, and friends. Much of the content related to the guest speaker's journey and what they wish they would have known before they began the jury. Since business owned business are the fastest growing sector in our economy, our guest today, Christina Gary, will be talking about something she would like to pass on to the listening audience. Welcome, Christina. Thank you. How well, it's so great you're here. And I found out from Rebecca, my marketing director, you actually got in touch with Rebecca. And yeah, here you are today. So thank you very much for being a part of Women's Business. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Oh, this is going to be such a fun time. We're going to be talking a little bit about who you are and where you came from, but we're going to be talking about the Finances, <laughs> yes, Finances. fun times. <laughs> I'm glad I'm interviewing you and you're not interviewing me. <laughs> it took me my second husband to realize, is there a real world out there called finances? <laughs> Absolutely. I just like to be out there like marketing, mm -hmm. making the money, bringing the money in. It's like I never looked at like where it went. Yes, so thank God yes. for husbands and daughters who will understand all that. So, yeah, but absolutely. I'm here with an expert today. So tell me, how did you uh, get to where you are today? Well, it's been an interesting journey. I decided to become a financial advisor mainly at the coaxing of my father. My father is also a financial advisor. And I started my career straight out of college working for a very large bank uh, here in the United States. And I learned very quickly that I don't work well in a corporate setting. I have much more of a spirit for being an entrepreneur and a business owner and being able to mold my business into what I want it to be. So having the opportunity to work with my father and as a financial advisor gave me the opportunity to build my own business and work with clients the way I want to work with them, which is ultimately knowing people on an individual basis and helping them reach their financial goals. And what would be a good financial goal for a woman? Let's, let's talk about women. Because I really feel like everything I've read, and I'm not read up on the subject, mm -hmm. but women don't have much of financial uh, expertise as men in many ways, I find. Is it changing? You know what? I don't think it has so much to do with financial expertise. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that women have a hard time giving themselves permission to put themselves on the list of people to take care of. I like that. Absolutely. And we we put our children first, we put our spouses first, we put our extended family first, and we end up last and the last ones to be taken care of. So what I like to work with my women on, whether they be stay-at-home moms or female professionals, is make sure they're taking the opportunity to put themselves on the list, make sure they're taking care of themselves so that they can be better for others, and whatever that means financially, whether it means taking a yoga class or taking up a hobby, we find a way to work that into their cash flow to make sure that they are their best so they can be their best for others. Wow, and how does that relate to the financial end of it? The financial end of it is the, the first reason I hear for why they don't do it is because they feel like they can't afford it. Can't afford, can't afford it. it. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I get that. I get, Absolutely. Or this, I'll be last to get paid. Let everybody else get paid. Let the kids have the there new shoes. Go. Let the kids go to school with the iPhones. Mm -hmm. Let my husband have a nice car. Mm -hmm. And then women kind of like suffer in that area a little bit Absolutely. for finances, don't we? Absolutely. Wow. So what I'm able to do is make sure you've got the right system in place to understand what cash flow is coming in what's cash flow is going out and help people understand that there are small changes that you can make whether it be changing habits or changing the way you manage your cash flow to be able to to make that happen for yourself make sure you can afford it is there a percentage or a certain amount that um once again we'll keep with women a sure. woman should financially put away for themselves Oh, absolutely. Um, there's a nice rule of thumb that 10% of your income should always go into savings. 10%, yep. And for women especially, uh, I'll take it a little bit further. Yeah, Let's right say, ahead. for example, there's a family that ends up uh, separating and there's a divorce situation. Uh, even if the female in the household was a stay-at-home mom or if they had a, a job at one point, chances are they earned less than the spouse. And so they end up in a situation where they don't have their own savings to be able to start their own life. So some of the things wow. that I work with my families on are, are you taking advantage of your employer benefits and saving for your own retirement as individuals? Although the goal is to remain a family, absolutely. a lot but of the time that, that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. It's like 51% now, absolutely. Exactly. So we have to make sure that 
each individual within the household, especially uh, the woman, and if that is the case where they're earning less of an income, they're taken care of. And you know, I'm going to say we've come a long way as women. I'm oh, going to sure. go back to probably the 70s, 80s, when um, I'll never forget this woman came to my house and sent me this freezer, to sell me a freezer to put my meat in, and my husband got pulled away in a plumbing job, and she said, "Where's your husband?" I'm like. Oh, he had to go to an unexpected home. And she goes, well, I'll come back another day when your mm -hmm. husband's here. Um, we've been trained not to only to talk to the wives. I, yes. like, like, I was insulted. Yeah. And I was so insulted, I said, give me the paper. I'm going to sign. I can even do the freezer. I'm telling you, I guess that's <laughs> what I'm telling the human beings out there in the world, telling my own family. I go, give me the paper. I'll sign it. You're going to make a sale today if you go back and educate those people. Yep. That woman can buy freezers. <laughs> I signed the paper and had this freezer <laughs> delivered to my house with meat in it. So anyhow, but that's how we were treated. Yeah. Like the man was the financial decision maker mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the family. To Absolutely. go buy a car, a woman couldn't go buy a car in the 70s or 80s. Mm -hmm. It's that they had to be escorted by their dad or their, their husband. Absolutely. So we have come a long way. We, we really have, have certainly come a long way. There are still pieces of it out there, mm -hmm. but yes, there's been a, there is. a yeah. big difference, yeah. I can imagine. So. Now, why did you pick Game Trades compared to other companies? Because your dad owned it or was in business with it? You know what? Yes. My father was already a financial advisor with Ameriprise wow. Financial. So that's how I ended up with Ameriprise. But there's still there's, there's a backstory as to why he ended up with Ameriprise and why we're still with Ameriprise now 13 years later is because Ameriprise is one of the financial firms out there that their initial focus was on financial planning, okay. not just gathering assets to make investments. We work with our clients on creating a plan and then ultimately getting to know you as an individual to create steps to help you get there. Along the way we address other topics like investments or insurance or looking at your tax situation but the driving force behind any relationship with my client is what is the plan, what do you want to achieve and how are we going to get you there. Wow, wow. And I'm sure working with the individual clients things can change in their life. Absolutely. Otherwise they might they might have gotten laid off, they might have um, Financially, their husbands could have gotten laid off. Who, who knows? Mm -hmm. A drop in pay. So you mm -hmm. have to be there every portion of the way. Absolutely. I meet with my clients a minimum of every quarter. Wow. And at any age, at any age, I've had some of my older clients comment to me that they were surprised that I had suggested we get together that often. But the reality is, every time they come in my office, something has changed. Something has changed for us to address to make sure that their financial plans stay on track and that life is always going to happen. We want to make sure that it doesn't derail your ultimate goal. So if I was, let's say, a young 20 year old and mm -hmm. I decided I'm going to invest. Tell me the steps I would get. Because it's a hard phone call to make. Because now it you're is. taking money out of your paycheck and you're going to invest it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully your business has got some type of 401k or something like that, a simple yeah. IRA. But what's, what's that conversation that needs to happen? If I have somebody, especially in, in their 20s, call me up and say, I feel like I need to invest or I want to invest, my first question is, well, let's figure out where you're at first. Okay. Let's find a step one. Are you at the step where it's appropriate to start investing and start putting some savings away? Uh, usually the way we address that, especially again for someone in their 20s, is are you taking advantage of that 401k? Many times they're not, which is very surprising to me even to this day, really? that many young folks, even middle-aged folks, are not taking advantage of their benefits available through the employer. So that's where we like to start is looking at those employer benefits and making sure we are at step one and that we're addressing <coughs> step one in a comfortable and an appropriate way before we move on. And how do you overcome that fear? Like what do you really do? That comes down to looking at the numbers. Okay, bottom Comes line. down to looking at the numbers, yes. always. You know what, you've got to understand what's coming in to understand what's able to go out. So when I'm looking at somebody who's never saved into a 401k before, my first question is, does your employer match anything? Excellent. It's usually a good place to start because you want to take advantage of that benefit mm -hmm. that's available to you. And then we look at, let's say there's a 3% match. How much is 3% of your paycheck really? Really. It's usually it's honestly, not a lot. Sometimes you go out <laughs> <laughs> get a drink or something. Yes. Or buy, take an evening out to eat. It doesn't even add up to that amount when you exactly. think about it. Really. Exactly. So really, it just, honestly, I'm a firm believer is if you don't see it in that paycheck, it doesn't exist. It's already, it's yes. already been financially um, mm -hmm. put in, in the right place. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm, a fine, I'm a really firm believer, take it out of the paycheck before you see it. Because once you got it yes. in that paycheck, it tends to go in a very different direction. Absolutely. And I'm sure a lot of employers today can actually do that very easily for you. Oh, very much so. Mm -hmm. uh, even if it's not a 401k, if you just want to save into a savings account, Thank get you. it out of the checking account, because if it ends up in the checking account, it's going to go it's somewhere else. It's going to go somewhere, absolutely. Y many employers have the capability to deduct directly from your paycheck and deposit that money into a separate savings account. Even if it's not a 401k, you can put it somewhere where you can still access. So I'm using my mother's terms, 
out of sight, out of mind. Right? Out of sight, out, out of, of mind. mind. Yes, So tell me, we shared a little bit before the show about mm -hmm. working in the family business. Yes. Usually my daughter's here with me doing the show, and she's a doctor's appointment right now, and I said, it's interesting working with a daughter, and you said, I get it, I work with my dad. Absolutely. I wish Amy was here to hear this, so I'll tell her <laughs> to watch the show, but tell me, what's that like to work with your dad? You know what? I never would have guessed 15 years ago when I was in college that I'd have come back home to work with my father. My father and I, I've learned later in life, are very, very similar in personality, <laughs> which works well most days, but some days I just have to close my office door and be by myself. Uh, but I am thankful to have my father with me because he understands the way my mind works. And when I need advice or I need guidance, I know he's going to give me the guidance that will work well for my personality and something that I actually be able to achieve. So it yeah, helps. Yeah, the wisdom that he has, the Absolutely. understanding of the business, the, uh, as we all say in our 60s, the history. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's all about the history. Absolutely. You know, and then you have a whole new generation with a whole b new bunch of ideas, put it together, and you got success. Mm -hmm. You really have mm -hmm. success. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and the world is constantly changing. Even within the financial advisory world, there are new technological capabilities that, uh, using my father as an example, he needs a little bit of encouragement to keep up with. Yes. As, yes. as a means Thank to attract you. a new market. Yep. So that's where we come together. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, my young staff will always say, Marianne, and I, and I think I'm pretty much pretty on board, at least tabletop, but in technology. <laughs> if you can get me up and going, I can yeah. keep on going. But mm -hmm. they have really taken time to show me how much the um, in technology oh, has really changed the whole world. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I still say to them, a phone call can break the deal. Yes. Sometimes you still have to have that voice Always. on the end of the phone. Because mm -hmm. you go back and forth reading emails, and all of a sudden, okay, uh, this woman has canceled four times, and we're doing mm -hmm. here. And then sometimes it's just, hey, everything okay? Uh, right. What's going on? And it just mm -hmm. gets the whole deal going a different direction. And I think for women in business, that's especially important mm -hmm. because women have the opportunity to transmit a, a nurturing or a caring message that can only be delivered with a personality or with a voice. Absolutely. So. Yeah. But we have a very different styles, which is yes. interesting between men and women, which is a, which is a really good thing. So you have two little children. I, I do. So how do you balance it? Let's hear this. Oh my goodness. How I, do I balance it? I could it? do that show on a whole show on balance, and I still wouldn't have the answer. So the reason I ask because yes. I'm looking for some insight. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, my oldest will be five in a few weeks mm -hmm. and balancing is an ongoing learning experience. I'll say that my youngest is two and a half and what I will say is when I had my first daughter it was easy enough to balance. I was still able to work full-time, come home, be with them in the evenings and I learned when I had my second daughter that that's where it got more challenging. Excellent. The second one tipped the scales for me where I started less and less giving myself permission to take care of myself because now I had a second child that needed more attention and it took coaxing from some very good friends to say pick one thing to do for yourself. Pick one thing to do for yourself because, and for me it was yoga, so I take my oh, yoga classes cool. every Sunday morning. It keeps me balanced, it keeps me centered, and it makes me better for my kids so that the time that I do have with them, and my evenings can be limited, I meet with a lot of clients on evenings, but it makes the time that I have with them more productive and, um, and, and just better for all of us because I'm in a better mood and not rushing to do other things. Absolutely. I put them in myself first. Um, and <coughs> How do you incorporate the daughter, especially being, so, let's talk about being kind of self-employed, which you sure. are, mm -hmm. working with your dad. Do you find that more flexibility? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the office this past Friday. I only had a couple of things to do on my computer. I brought them right in with me, and they yeah. play with Papa for a little while while yeah. I'm working, and you know, an hour, hour and a half later, they love coming to play in Mommy's office, and then we all head off for the rest of our day. Yeah. So yes, there are definitely opportunities for me to bring them into the office with me a little while, uh, or even just take my computer home once in a while and know that I can get a few things done during the day, even while they're around. And we're fortunate enough that my mom and my mother-in-law spend a lot of time with them as well. Oh, so awesome they're support. always always surrounded by family, a lot of support, which definitely helps. Yeah, support and two families working mm -hmm. is, is need that support. Yeah. I know my, my grandchildren range from two years old to 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Last week, the 17-year-old got his driver's license. He's out there on the road. But when they were all little coming to the office, especially now the yeah. five-year-old, she sees the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. She sees like all the uh, writing on the whiteboard and she'll look and then she'll write her own stuff at the end. I said, well, where do you think that's going to bring you? Well, Grandma, maybe you can bring a new playground into this daycare. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so it's amazing how yes. they can go into that corporate feeling and mm -hmm. just know know exactly they can play mm -hmm. and they can experiment and who knows what oh, the absolutely. future will bring for them, which is amazing. Yeah. My girls have their own office in our yep. basement, little closet under yep. the stairs where all their coloring and activity yep. books are. Yep. So they do. They go 
go to their own office once in a while it's, too. Yeah, they probably <laughs> say it will go to the office. Yes, <laughs> they Very do. Very different atmospheres, that's for yeah. sure. So what, what did your dad say to you when you were younger that wanted you to um, go into this business? You oh probably gosh. had a lot of ideas and that you wanted to well, do. Well, I'll share with you that actually becoming uh, a professional in the finance world didn't happen until my second year of college. Got it. My father had uh, some car dealerships while I was growing up and a few other businesses here and there. When I first went to college, I started as a, with a major in marine biology. I really enjoyed scuba diving, uh, but realized very quickly that my mind wasn't built for the science. My mind wasn't built for memorizing Latin. It, it wasn't clicking with me. And the thought crossed my mind, well, my father graduated from college with an, uh, a degree in economics. Let me give it a try. So I tried an economics class and absolutely loved it. I understood it. Uh, economics has a cause and effect. So it was easier for me to understand and I ran with it. And so, like I said, I graduated from college. I started working for a very large bank. But when I decided to move back to Rhode Island, uh, it took about a year for my father to truly convince me to leave the corporate world and become self-employed. But I am so thankful I did. Yeah, so yeah. thankful I did. And again, the freedom to, to make my schedule as I choose to. If I want to take my kids to the zoo tomorrow, I'm going to do that. You're going to take your kids to the zoo tomorrow, but you mm -hmm. also know that you might be up to 11 o'clock working. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you and Absolutely. I know that clearly. I've got the flexibility. I understand the flexibility. It's fantastic. Yeah. However, you know, at the other end of it has to be, you, you find yourself with those us type A personalities uh, don't, don't <laughs> stop in many, many ways. How about to another young um, th woman or someone who wants to go back into the career life? What would you suggest to them? Oh my gosh. Uh, a female who wants to go back into the career life, I'd say, don't forget about yourself. Yeah. Make sure you take care of yourself because if you are stressed and run down, you're going to be tired all the time and you're not going to be able to give your best to your family. You're not going to be able to give your best to your customers or your clients. Mm -hmm. So keep yourself on the list of, in, in the finance world, you've got to pay yourself. Make sure you are on the list of bills to be paid. Wow. That relates to savings and it relates to keeping yourself happy mentally. I want to pick up on something you said, mm -hmm. scuba diving. Yes. Biggest fear of my whole life. Really? We're going on a family vacation next year, uh, next week, excuse me, for my son's wedding. Yeah. And a few of my, we're all going to be there, all of us, and a few of my um, family members said they're going scuba diving. I'm like, mm -hmm. keep your mouth shut, you're just the grandmother. <laughs> so it's okay to do that? Oh my gosh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm picking absolutely. up on that piece. Absolutely. Safe, very there safe. are, yes, there are certertification classes to be able to go scuba diving. They teach you how to use all of the equipment. Just for absolutely. one day for a vacation, too? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, I'd be more <laughs> fearful on the long dives you have to be mindful of the balance of the gases in the tank you have okay. to come back up at a certain pace to make sure you don't get dizzy so there are a lot of things to include but for a vacation and some recreational activity oh my gosh well when you said scuba diving, you had this like smile on oh, your yes. face it seems like it was something you really like loved doing. it i got into marine biology because i enjoyed the scuba diving so i keep scuba diving as a hobby on the side it's very very hobby. occasionally uh, but it wasn't worth it, it was not career worthy for me it wasn't right it. for my personality i get it yeah how about um, women who work too hard? Women who work too hard. What do you think? What oh advice can gosh. we give them? Find a hobby. Find a hobby. That was something that took me a long time to realize. Uh, I, would, I would look at my husband. My husband has a lot of uh, things he likes to do, hunting, fishing, outdoor type things. And I would sit back and have conversations with him and say, I don't have a hobby. There's nothing that I'm passionate enough about that I really feel like doing all the time. I enjoy playing with my kids. But what else is there? It took me a long time to find something. I found yoga. I also found that I enjoy gardening. I enjoy working oh, in my yard. Right. So yeah. sometimes it takes some exploration, but don't give up. Find one thing that you like to do that will take you away out of your own mind, mm -hmm. away from the kids for a little while, yeah. away from the family, away from the work and it'll it'll help keep you balanced. How about like girlfriends or people who are in your profession? Do you hang out with them at all to have conversations or do you do like conferences or? <clears throat> Occasionally, that's one of the, I'd say one of the pitfalls of being self-employed yeah. is there aren't a lot of gatherings of people, of yeah. other Ameriprise advisors, for example, okay. especially with the advent of webinars and, and things being able Good to be to done know. online. We don't have those conferences the way we used to. Okay. Uh, so my girlfriends are definitely helpful in keeping me uh, keeping me balanced, having the girls' night out once in a while, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah, I do miss that. As far as being self-employed, you don't get the camaraderie of having a lot of coworkers. Yes, exactly. But yeah, but we work through that. And um, as it relates to education, what would mm -hmm. people need if they wanted to go into the profession? What would they need for education? 
there's I, th I feel there's a difference between what people need and what is valuable to have. Okay, yeah. So to become a financial advisor, you need some securities licensing, either a Series 7 or a Series 6, which allows you to uh, transact business in investments, mm -hmm. and then uh, a 6 or a 63, which is that same um, transactional business, yeah. uh, but that's the state license. But to truly be effective for your clients, yeah. uh, I personally am a certified financial planner, a CFP. Oh, wow. uh, I feel that that added a whole new dimension to the service that I'm able to provide for my clients because it focuses on the financial planning, not just on the investment side. Mm -hmm. So to become a financial advisor, I need a securities license that allows me to place trades. And how do you get like, a bonds. security license? Is that you a do course need a, you take or a college course? Or? You do need a company to sponsor you. Okay, so good to know. Uh, an Amero Prize or a Merrill Lynch or a Morgan Stanley, things like yep. that. They do need to sponsor you. Uh, you can do a self-paced study or there are uh, online or instructor-led courses that you can take. Uh, but it is a, basically a, I did a self-paced study with a final mm -hmm. exam at the end. Um, uh, so yeah, it's it's self-paced. You teach you buy a book, teach yourself. And sort then, of like a real estate exam. Okay, got it. The so way real estate my, works. And there's all different levels you can keep on going. Absolutely. Once you've achieved your initial licenses to be able to do business, you can continue on certified financial planner or a multitude of other designations that are out there. There are certified divorce analysts or really? certified financial analysts. It, yes, there are many, many options depending on uh, where you find your passion is or a particular um, specialty that you want to deliver to your clients. For me, that financial planning is, is my niche. I enjoy it very, very much. <laughs> Tell you, really. So <laughs> that's that's the direction I went as far as furthering my education once I became a so financial you just advisor. just keep doing it and doing it and doing exactly. it. Yeah. Now, what would be the difference in advice you would give someone in their 20s compared to someone in their 50s or 60s? Somebody in their 20s, you're definitely able to be much more aggressive. aggressive you can okay. be much more aggressive when it comes to the stock market, but I also feel like you can be more aggressive when it comes to saving as well. Right. Because they're early enough in life that you can mold or adjust some of the habits, the financial habits that they're creating. Oh, interesting. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Someone a little bit later on in life, it's more difficult to adjust those habits, mm. yet sometimes more critical depending on how prepared or unprepared they are for their own retirement. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely different dynamic, the different age groups. And all the pauses we have spoken about mm -hmm. financial, but what about when the it all dipped. Absolutely. How did you handle all, did you, did you get a flood mm -hmm. of phone calls and people, I mean, I know a lot of my friends, I'm working forever because I love working, that's yes. what I do. However, a lot of my friends, they were like petrified. They were yes. like, oh my God, their, their, their retirement's like dropped by mm -hmm. a third or a half. Mm -hmm. How Absolutely. do you deal with that emotional end of it? The first thing, let me answer your, uh, mm -hmm. the beginning part of your question, my phone did not ring off the hook, not at all. Not I'm at shocked. all. Wow. I know. And I'll tell you why. It yes. has to do with the financial planning. You've got long term goals. Your portfolio is set up in such a way to mature when you need access to the money. So the people that needed access to their money within a short period of time, one year, three years, five years, were not invested very aggressively. Got so it. when we see in the news that the S&P 500 dropped 50% in 2008, the S&P 500 is 100% stock. If I had a client who was a retiree or a pre-retiree, their portfolio is not 100% stock, so it would Got not it. have dropped off as much. Doesn't mean I didn't have a few nervous clients, but those you are the make ones it sound that so I. so simple. I, I've <laughs> never been so I've never been so easily talking finance. This is cool. Go ahead, it's, go ahead, it's, go ahead it's, keep going. It is a personal relationship, <laughs> it and it is. is emotional, which is one of the reasons I enjoy being a female in a male industry. Mm. I enjoy being a female to speak with somebody about a topic that can be just as emotional as it is intricate, and. Um, it's something that people are fearful of. I don't think people need to be fearful of it. If you have a plan in place, then you follow the follow the steps and you'll get where you need to go. And you know, I also want to add as an educator, and tell me if I'm right or wrong, because I could okay. be off base. Do you need talking about this? Which I did not talk about this at the kitchen table with my kids, and they're in their 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. But I need to tell you, if I could go <coughs> back and do it all again, maybe when I can do an article, I would really love to see family, which I'm sure you do with your family, but all families have this conversation at the kitchen mm -hmm. table. They're probably the first time they hear about money is when they can't pay the electric bill or they're enough for food. Yes. And that just twists the whole sense of a five, six, seven year old. Oh my so gosh. To really talk about this with a children at a very young age, how they're going to invest. Get them a bank account. Tell me if I'm on the right track. Absolutely. Okay. My okay. little ones say to me, mommy, I want to buy a big house with a playground in the backyard. They have no concept of money. Yep. I'll relate it to millennials. Millennials just watched their parents go through the 
this recession in 2008, yep. dealing with foreclosures in their homes. Maybe yes, they had it, to move. Yes. Millennials are fearful of buying a house. house yes, absolutely. Good point. So, yeah. absolutely, at well, any age. I give my grandkids $5 to come visit me. <laughs> <laughs> my dad used to give a dollar, and my grandfather gave a nickel. So Inflation. I but, you know, it was very interesting. My daughter said to her, she has one child, and she said to the day I gave Avery $5 to come visit me, and she's five years old, and she mm -hmm. goes, 50% of that will go in the bank. And I just stopped and looked. I'm like, wow, what mm -hmm. a great lesson. 50% mm -hmm. of that will go in the bank yeah. toward your college education. Mm -hmm. Like, and I'm Dr. Yeah. Daycare, like, wow, yeah. my God, what you can learn through your grandparents, through your grandchildren and your children. Yeah. But what a message that is. So even if a child gets a dollar from someone, yes. Take 50% of that and put it in a piggy bank and then into a bank account. Am I on the right track? Absolutely. My girls have, my one has a piggy bank, the other has an owl bank. Oh, they <laughs> love it. They like to shake it and hear the change inside, wow. make it a fun activity. So get, get them turned on to money at a young age, bottom line, because money is a huge part of our life. It's a big part of our life. And it's and an emotional success. part of our it's, life. Oh, very nice. Said. Absolutely. Christina, very nice and emotional part of life. I yeah. can have the ups and downs of lots of things in our lifestyle. I've seen it with all friends and family through many, mm -hmm. many years. The part you just said too about the millennium is being fearful of mm -hmm. um, buying houses because yes. that fear has been, they live that fear. They've internalized that fear. Mm -hmm. Now they have their fear. Mm -hmm. So now I hear, I guess they're gonna have to work that through. Absolutely, I relate wow. it to working with older clients from depression era parents. Similar concept. Yes. Well, they just kind of hoard everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> we could definitely talk for hours. Yeah. <laughs> so we have another minute left. Anything you didn't ask that you want to bring to the table? Because you're a great guest today. Thank you. Talk you know about what? money here. We're talking about money. Absolutely. Talking about money does not have to be something that you're afraid of. It doesn't have to be something that you feel, I can't afford it, so I'm not going to bother paying attention to it. The sooner you pay attention to it and get your goals on track, the sooner you'll be able to have the things that you want. And having a financial advisor in your corner is going to help you set realistic goals that are achievable to ultimately help set your expectation as to what's appropriate for you and the things that you want to achieve. Great. Thank you so very, very much for being a guest on Women's Business. Thank you for having me. You're very, very welcome. Thank you, Christina.